Hey everyone, welcome back. In today's video, we're gonna be smoking a lamb shoulder in the Weber kettle. Now we've got the Weber set up, we're gonna be running the snake method because this is gonna be a long cook. We're gonna be going for that beautiful pulled lamb type stuff. We're gonna be cooking this for probably eight hours plus. So the snake method is absolutely perfect for it. So we've gone ahead, set up our snake. If you wanna see the snake method in depth, I'll chuck a video down in the description. The link's there. Check it out if you want to see the snake method step by step. But for now, we'll get this beautiful little lamb shoulder out and we'll give it a trim. All right, so trimming the lamb shoulder. Now you want to get rid of most of this hard white fat. It will render down, but I'm not a fan of rendered lamb fat. I don't think lamb fat makes the meat taste any better like beef fat does. So we'll go ahead and we'll trim the hard white fat off and the rest of it is pretty much good to go. You want to make sure you take the, call it the paddy whack out. That's just going to be really tough. So make sure you scoop that out if it's in there. Other than that, trim a tiny bit off the bottom here. We'll take that little gland out as well. And apart from that, I reckon we're good to go. All right, now our lamb shoulders all trimmed up. Let's make a nice, quick, simple and easy homemade rub for it. All right, so in a shaker or a bowl, we're gonna start with one tablespoon of salt, and then one tablespoon of cracked black pepper, and then one teaspoon of rosemary leaves, one teaspoon of garlic powder, and one teaspoon of onion powder. And you can either mix it all together if you've got a bowl, or you can put your lid on if you've got a shaker, put the top on, give it a good mix around. All right, our next step now our rub's made is we're gonna give the lamb a light coat in mustard just to help bind the rub to the meat and then we're gonna season it. All right, and now we're ready to get the lamb in the weather. All right, so we've got our beautiful olive wood chunk from Natural Smoke sitting there. So we'll go ahead and place our lamb in. All right, so like I just mentioned, we've got some olive wood from Natural Smoke in there. Olive wood and lamb go absolutely perfect together. So what we're gonna do now is we're just gonna leave it. We're gonna check on it in a few hours. It's gonna be running at about 275 Fahrenheit or 135 degrees Celsius. That's a two kilo-ish lamb shoulder. So I'd imagine this is gonna be a six to eight hour cook, but we're not gonna be using time as our main reference. We're gonna be going by internal temperature and probe tenderness a bit later on. So we'll come back in a few hours and see how it's going. All right, we are about two hours in now. So let's open the lid and see how it's going. All right, so that's looking really nice. One thing we're gonna make sure of is that when our heat source is around the lamb shoulder, we're gonna make sure our vent is in the opposite position. So the heat is always passing over the lamb shoulder. So while the heat source is back here, we can have our vent position there now. And then as that snake moves around, we're just gonna make sure that vent is always on the opposite side. So the heat passes through and over the lamb shoulder. That's looking really nice. Our smoking wood's burnt out. Might just give the lamb shoulder a quick spritz just to keep some moisture in there. And then we'll close it back up. All right, I'm really happy with how that's coming along. It's looking great. And because our lamb shoulder is only quite small, I'm not gonna to have to adjust that cooking grate either. If we had a big lamb shoulder or you were cooking something else low and slow, that's a big cut and it was overhanging a part of the snake, you wanna be making sure that you adjust your cooking grate and spin it around so it's never overlapping the burning part of the snake. You don't want that direct heat coming up from underneath. So for now, we'll just keep leaving it for another couple of hours and we'll come back once we're happy with that bark and we're around that 160 Fahrenheit internal or 70 degrees Celsius. So we'll come back soon. All right, we're about three and a half hours in. Let's have a look. I reckon we're gonna be pretty close, if not ready to wrap it. All right, that's looking fantastic. We are at about 170 Fahrenheit internal. I'm happy with that. Let's get it out and wrap it up. 
All right, so we're going to go meat side down because we've got some nasty sharp bones. We've got two layers of nice thick foil. We're going to put some butter in with it and also a splash of Worcestershire sauce just for a bit of savouriness. You don't have to add anything if you don't want to. You could add some beef stock, some chicken stock, a little bit of cider vinegar. Just want to keep a little bit of moisture in there. So now we'll wrap it up nice and tight and get it back in. All right, so now it's all wrapped up. We're just gonna let it go again until we reach about 205 degrees Fahrenheit or 96 degrees Celsius. Now we're gonna check it for probe tenderness once we get to that stage. It might take one hour, it might take three hours, it might take four. We're just gonna let our thermometer tell us when it's ready and then we're gonna check for probe tenderness. Like I said, we're gonna open that foil up, probe around, have a feel, make sure it's probing really nice and tender. You wanna make sure it feels like a hot knife through butter. So we'll come back when we reach our target internal. All right, we're just shy of the five hour mark and we have hit that range of about 205 Fahrenheit or 96 degrees Celsius. So let's open it up, have a probe around and see how it's feeling. As you can see, that bone started to come out, getting draw back on all the bones that are in there. So let's get our instant read, have a feel around. Probing nice and tender, especially up there. I'll flip it over and we'll have a look at the other side and have a probe around there too. Yeah, that's super tender. I think it's actually so tender, I accidentally probed through it and pierced the foil and you can hear the liquid draining out the bottom into the tray below. Well, that's fine, I might leave this partially unwrapped, so basically boating it just to get some of that bark back on top. So I'll wrap the foil tight around it, put the lid back on, let that bark build up a bit more and then we'll let it rest and pull it apart. <laughs> All right, so the lamb shoulder's been uncovered again for about 20, 25 minutes. I reckon it's ready to rest. Let's have a quick look. Right, that is looking incredible. It's feeling incredible too. Another quick probe around, that's just super tender. That probe's just falling through. So what we'll do is we'll get it out. I'm gonna take it inside and I'm gonna let it rest away from the flies for a good half an hour to 45 minutes and then we'll pull it apart. All right, so our lamb shoulder is often resting but our snake hadn't completely burnt through. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna separate the unburnt briquettes so we can save them for our next cook. All right, so get your high heat gloves on, take off the cooking grate. And we'll get some charcoal tongs. and literally just separate them unburnt ones. And then we'll shut down both of our vents. And we can use them unburnt ones for our next cook. All right, it's had a quick rest, time to pull it apart. All right, we are done, time for a taste. I'm gonna get this nice barky bit here. Mmm, that is delicious. That olive wood, that homemade rub, that is so tender and juicy. Yeah, that's a winner. It's not overpowering, it's well balanced, that 
rub really complements the lamb. It's so simple. By all means, go ahead and use a store-bought one. If you've got a favorite one, use it. That's a really good simple rub that brings out a lot of flavor. And that olive wood just pairs perfect with lamb. If you haven't tried olive wood, get onto it. If not, oak also pairs really well with lamb, but seriously, I can't, I can't get enough of that. That is beautiful. If you haven't tried lamb, try and get hold of some. So, so good, so underrated. I'm gonna go scoff the rest of that. So thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.